Welcome to another Shadow of War video. As Monolith so proudly presented, they have improved upon the Nemesis system. Previously, you needed to kill or dominate the Warchief to take control of a region. This remains relatively the same, though this time you need to assault the fortress of the Overlord of the region you want to conquer. These fortress assaults are a big part of the game, but how do they actually work? Let's take a look at it. If you go into the army screen you can see the region is represented by a fortress. The one that controls the fortress is called the Overlord. He controls the region. The tribe that the Overlord belongs to decides what the region will look like. But more on that later. The Overlord commands several war chiefs, which in turn command their own captains. When dominating or killing you need to work your way up the hierarchy from the captains to the Overlord. But we want to take control of a region. How do you do it? Once you've built your army by dominating the captains and warchiefs alike, it's time to start the fortress assault. There are four stages or phases depending on what you would call it. We have the planning phase. In the second phase you need to capture the victory points inside of the fortress. Once you have done that, you need to defeat the overlord of the fortress, and if successful, you can assign a new overlord. Let's take a closer look. We'll start with the planning phase. Before you attack the fortress, you want to take a look at what and who you bring with your army. On the left side of the screen, there are six siege upgrades. These increase the power of your army. Let's take a look at them. In the first slot, you get to choose the assault leader. This decides which one of your captains or war chiefs leads the attack. These decide which additional troop you can bring in, choosing from sappers, armored cavalry or olukhai. Moving on to the second slot, here you can choose additional troops that strengthen your army. The choice is between savages, defenders and hunters. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. If you want more information on that, check out our classes video. In the third slot, what did you bring us? Siege Beasts, which essentially serve the role as artillery. These are Graugs with ballistas on their backs. They can also be controlled by you. They can fire three types of ammo, fiery, poisonous and cursed, each with their own benefits. In the fourth slot, you can select creatures for your army. Here you can choose between War Graugs, Shelob's Brood, which are essentially spiders, and Wild Drakes. The Wargraug probably doesn't need explaining. Shelob's Brood are spiders that poison and terrorize the enemies. And the Wild Drakes can be used to rain fiery destruction. But keep in mind they aren't tamed yet. Meaning that they will attack both troops until dominated. According to Michael the Plutter you are actually able to have at least 4 drakes at a time. Maybe even more. But that's of course later on in the game. The 5th and the 6th slots are currently unknown. When choosing any of these upgrades you have to be tactical and keep in mind what benefits you want most in attacking this fortress, since each fortress also has its own upgrades. In the first slot you can see the type of walls, they didn't specify which options there are, but the choice is probably between wood, stone and iron or metal. The second slot represents the gate. Once again they didn't specify, but you can imagine there are once again three options from wood to iron. You probably don't want to select the sappers when they have an iron gate. In the slot for the third upgrade you can see the overlord's additional troops. These are similar to the ones that you can bring. Moving on to the fourth slot we have siege beasts, similar to those of the attacking army, the only difference is that they stand on top of towers. In the fifth slot you can expect wall defenses, mouths on the wall that release either poison spouts, fire spouts or curse spouts. These pretty much speak for themselves. It is unknown what the sixth slot holds. It is also possible to challenge a war chief before beginning an assault, so you can disable one of the advantages that the fortress has. And once you have upgraded your army you can start the assault. This part comes down to capturing the fortress, and you can do this by capturing three victory points. The first one is at the gatehouse, the second one is in the ward, and the third and final one is the courtyard. Capture these by getting more of your army on the point that fight the enemy army. 
If you did all this and defeated the war chief, you can continue. You can enter the keep and challenge the overlord in his throne room. In all technicality, this part is very simple. You only have to defeat the overlord any way you see fit. Beforehand, you can select a bodyguard which you can summon in to help defeat the overlord. And make sure to pick your bodyguard wisely so you can capitalize on the overlord's weaknesses. Once you have defeated the overlord, it is up to you to select a new one from your army. Keep in mind that the tribe that the overlord belongs to decides what the fortress, the region and the weather are going to look like. Besides this, each tribe has its own bonuses. In case you want to know more on that topic, you can check out our tribes video. And that's it for the fortress assault. There are going to be a lot of regions, each with their own fortresses and castles. We have seen a lot of gameplay on E3 from the fortress assaults. We haven't seen any footage from the other side, so defending a fortress, but it's probably soon to be coming. Personally, I think this is one of the best improvements of the game and can't wait to wage my own wars. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. As always, it is appreciated. Any questions that you have can be asked in the comment section down below. And we hopefully see you in the next video. Peace out and see you later.